Now, oh, baby girl, when you hear the name Gia, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The very first thing for me that comes to mind was the movie. When she died, I was only about four years old. So I do remember throughout my youth hearing her name, not really knowing who she was, but you heard that she was like a really famous model, supermodel kind of thing and that she had died of AIDS. I mean, that was for some reason like just common public knowledge, but I didn't really understand who she was until I saw the movie. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Now the movie we're talking about is a movie that came out called Gia, which is what Gia went by in her modeling career. And the movie starred Angelina Jolie who played the supermodel. Now if you haven't seen it, you need to, because for the most part, it pretty much follows Gia's life to the T. They leave out a few different things, but everything that you see in the movie happened in real life. She went from nowhere to everywhere in a New York minute. Honey, you can do whatever you want now. She was living a dream. What do I want? It became her worst nightmare. Based on the real life story of supermodel Gia Karanji. You're on the cover of Vogue, I can't believe it! A non-stop jet fuel jag into the stratosphere of fame, money, and passion. Take a deep breath, darling. You are in for the ride of your life. Gia. I have to be completely honest with you guys. It is beyond freezing here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm talking like 20 degrees, 21 degrees, and both Jessica and I are chilled, frozen if you will, to the bone. But that's okay because we wanted to visit Gia before we headed further east. Now Gia's grave is right over here. It's actually pretty easy to find because of these yellow flowers. Gia Marie Karanji, beloved daughter, 1960 to 1986. The last year of Gia's life was really, really hard. From research, found out that in December 1985, she was admitted to the hospital for pneumonia. She had pneumonia really bad. I mean, it was winter. Winter here in Pennsylvania could get really rough. And a few days later, after being admitted, the doctors told her that she had AIDS. And they believe that it's because of her heroin addiction and using needles. She eventually got out, but throughout that year, she got sicker and sicker. And then to make matters even worse, after, I wouldn't say she, she was living on the streets, but she spent a lot of time on the streets. I think I even read somewhere that she kind of dabbled in sex work and the last month of her life, she was taken into the hospital because she was found beaten and raped on the streets. They admitted Gia once again into the hospital, and that was on October 18th, 1986. And sadly, she died one month later from AIDS-related complications on November 18th. She was 26 years old. Now, you gotta keep in mind that at the time, AIDS was, was a new thing. Like, m people didn't really know much about it. It was kind of taking the world by storm. And uh, she was the first famous woman to die of AIDS in the United States. Now, in this video, we're gonna be telling stories about Gia, covering different aspects of her life. We're gonna visit the, the home that she grew up in and the high school where she became a Bowie kid that pretty much shaped her entire life. Well, until she passed away at the age of 26. So bear with us as we brave the cold and tell you the life of Gia Karanji. 
Before we get going on our adventure, I realize that some of you have never heard the name Gia before, and some of you probably haven't even seen the movie starring Angelina Jolie. And that's okay. Basically, Gia was the world's first supermodel. And to be honest, I never heard of Gia before until I saw the movie starring Angelina Jolie. And honestly, growing up, when I heard a supermodel, the first thing I think of is Cindy Crawford. But actually, Cindy Crawford basically came into play almost immediately after Gia's death. Unlike most supermodels at the time, Gia really didn't need all the, the makeup and the dresses and, you know, designer clothing, if you will. She was naturally beautiful. She was naturally at home in front of the camera. Anybody who's ever worked with her, anybody who's ever photographed her said that she just owned it. She was just her. She didn't act. She didn't show up to take photos. She was just there and the camera was working for her. There's a story where one of the photographers that worked with Gia was actually doing a photo shoot with the legendary Diana Ross. And they asked Gia if they could borrow one of her pairs of jeans that were all ripped and tattered and torn because that's the look that they're going for. Again, Gia was ahead of her time in fashion without even really being fashionable. And after the photo shoot, Diana Ross asked if she could keep them. She wanted the pair of jeans. She loved them that much. She thought it was cool. And Gia was like, no. Gia told the legendary Diana Ross, no, you can't have my pants. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Gia's rise to fame is both beautiful and sad. There's an interview where she's talking about this. She says that she wasn't made into a supermodel. But they started working with very good people, you know, and a lot of work, I mean, all the time, very fast. I didn't build into a, into a model. I just sort of became one. You. Now, she was living here. She was born and she lived here in Philadelphia up until she was 17 years old. And she was kind of dabbling in modeling here and there. Uh, something that I wouldn't say she always wanted to do, but her mom in the past used to dabble in it herself. So she was kind of around it and she wanted to be a part of it. Something that she knew, something that she kind of, she kind of wanted. Didn't expect it to go the way that it did. Um, she was discovered because she did some test shots for like a salon magazine, if you will, like an advertisement, and somebody saw it. It caught the attention of somebody very, very popular, and they put her pictures in front of a woman by the name of Wilhelmina Cooper, who owned Will Wilhelmina Models in New York City. It was like the biggest modeling agency at the time. And Wilhelmina and Gia became best friends. It was also rumored that at one point they were lovers, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on, just a little bit. Now, Gia, just like in the movie, it was almost like she needed to have somebody around all the time. Like, I think her family member said at one point, like her brother said that it was almost like she always needed to have a babysitter. She always needed to have somebody there. 
and her and Wilhelmina got really close and then eventually Wilhelmina passed. I think it was from cancer and it hit Gia really, really hard. Now, I know I'm skipping around a lot here. Back whenever Gia was living here in Philadelphia, like a lot of kids back then, she used to dabble in some drugs. And whenever she moved to New York City, somehow she kind of got addicted to heroin. And whenever Wilhelmina died, she just kind of went off the deep end. She went from being, again, it was just a very short time. She went from being the most sought after model to being blacklisted numerous amount of times. She would go into these rehabs and she would get clean and she would come back out and, and she would want work and people would hire her because you know she was very famous. Her face has been on all these big magazines and then she would burn that bridge and then people would blacklist her again. There's another story where I think she was scheduled to photograph with, with Richard Avedon, Avedon the, one, a very amazing photographer, photographed a lot, of a lot of celebrities. And it was for Versace, I do believe. And she was there at the shoot and she said that she needed to go get cigarettes. So she left the shoot, went to go get cigarettes, and then never came back. Again, she was blacklisted. And from there, it just spiraled from the top all the way down to the bottom. It, it, it really is a sad story. When Gia Karanji was born, this is the house that her family was living in. So this is Gia's childhood home. 4027 Fittler Street right here in Philadelphia. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of like a storybook Amityville horror house, like with those windows up there at the top, but then the color and the bricks. It's very storybookish. Now, sadly, eventually her parents divorced and she spent half of her time with her mother and half the time with her father and both of them remarried. And just like in the movie, G was actually really close to her mother. In a little bit, we're gonna head over to where Gia went to high school and where she, I guess you can say, ultimately found herself with the help of some friends and of all people, David Bowie. You see, Gia was one of the Bowie kids here in Philly. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that when we get over there. But since we're here where she grew up, Gia's relationship with her mom was so close that even though her mother really had no idea what or who David Bowie was, she supported Gia. And she even made her some Bowie-esque costumes, including a red jumpsuit, and even went to a couple concerts with her. So it's kind of neat, right? To have that kind of support. It's rubbed off on him, you know. It's, it's I find. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's all. I'm sure it's all his influence. <laughs> I have blame hunt. It has been said that you are more popular in this city than you are anywhere else. I don't know if that's true. I think it ranks up there with Cleveland. Yeah. It, it's a real happy place for me. It always has been. I, some of my the very first shows that we ever did is uh, back in the Ziggy days, were in Philadelphia at this very theater. We've recorded in Philadelphia twice. Um, it just seems lucky place to start with. I got out and about here a lot when I was first here. I mean, in 73, I was socializing like there was no tomorrow. I mean, I hit every club in town. I knew everybody. I guess that, you know, I had a real one-on-one -on -one contact with the entire place. The building you're looking at right now is the new building for the Abraham Lincoln High School. The old one has been torn down quite some time ago. Talking to the ladies at the office, they did tell me that the old high school used to stand over here in this field right next to the current school, which is that building right there on the right. Sadly, the old Abraham Lincoln High School that Gia would have went to is long gone. But they built a new one in its place. 
And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another cold, grim adventure, this time in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, telling the story of Gia, the first supermodel. Amazing story, amazing life, quick and sad ending when she was 26 years old. With that being said, until next time, happy Halloween. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck always.